Hey guys, and welcome to what only can be described as possibly the best show on earth, or at least in our corner of the internet. And so it's kind of fun to do these live streams, and I haven't done it for a little while just because I was out traveling. Unfortunately, we had a, a family death, uh, extended family on my wife's side, and so we had to make a, a trip over to Pennsylvania, so I wasn't around my streaming station. So that's why we had a little delay in when I last um, stream, but it's good to be back. We're back here in Ohio and we have the Christmas season, the holiday season coming up. And so it's really awesome to be back in the swing of things. And welcome once again to our, I guess, uh, twice monthly show that we have where we talk about backpacking stuff, um, be it gear, be it any questions you guys have had, um, on the channel in the course of the last couple, uh, last two weeks or so. And so let's get right into the questions. There are lots of people in the chat. And so it's awesome to see you guys here. Welcome, Merry Christmas to everyone. It's always fun to see who who is around. Thanks, Crazy Kev. Um, Bruce is here from Nature Calls. Steven C, DIY Solar and Wind. And Scott, who is a new subscriber. So welcome, man. Welcome to the to the stream and the chat. And I'll get started right away with one of the, the questions that I had on my Facebook page. And I just have a page there. And if you haven't um, seen it, go ahead and check it out. The link. Uh, should be in the description. Let me just go ahead and, and check. Yep, under my um, social area. Uh, you see Facebook. It's basically facebook.com slash Tim Watson Outdoors. And so that's where I'll be posting whenever I am going to go ahead and stream. And so that way you know. I also put it on Twitter as well um, if you have a Twitter account. I tend not to use Twitter very frequently, but I typically tell people when, it, when uh, I'm streaming. But one of the good questions that we had is from Kyle, who's one of my buddies who went with me out in Red River Gorge, uh, that seems like forever ago, months ago now, um, but he, he asked, what is your biggest or best high while backpacking? You know, it can be a specific event, a specific trip, specific vista, whatever it is. He didn't really give me a, uh, uh, something that we need to kind of stick to parameters wise, but there are lots of ones that I thought about. I, I first of all thought about being uh, the top of Gregory Bald and uh, in the Smokies, of course, and have that woman riding up on her horse screaming about how there was a bear on the other side of the bald, um, just eating berries. And it was just a, a really surreal experience, but I can't call that one a high. Um, I'd have for, a, a, I guess, a true backpacking high, I'd have to go back to the Maroon Bells this summer. We were hiking, you know, we made the first pass, uh, West Maroon Pass, and we had to hike up to uh, Trail Rider. And Trail Rider was just gorgeous. Um, if you remember seeing it, I mean, Frigidaire Pass was the one where I had to spend a couple seconds at the top of the pass because there was kind of lightning and bad weather and we had to kind of get down. But Trail Rider was that area we got to kind of hang out in and see both sides where we were we were coming from and where we were heading down into Fervert Basin. And just that, that feeling of being up so high, um, granted it was only 12,500 feet or so, but being up that high, uh, seeing the views that we did, that was just awesome. That was probably my favorite, uh, I guess I call it like a, a snapshot experience. I don't know, it was one of those uh, movies that my wife made me watch and they just kind of took a snapshot memory. Maybe it was that Maybe that was The Office, I don't know. <laughs> and that was one of those moments where I'm like, wow, this is just a really good time and this is uh, one of my peak moments, if you will, my mountaintop moments. And then of course... Um, he also asked a, a, a great question, which is, what do you, and he was joking, of course, um, what do you do when ultralight hipsters make fun of your large backpack? <laughs> and if you know anything about Kyle at all, uh, he puts out videos occasionally. Uh, he very much re reminds me of his humor. If you're on Instagram, go ahead and give a follow to ultralight jerk. And I have no idea who this Instagram profile is, who's uh, posting those pictures and those comments, but he is hilarious. It's one of those things where he kind of uh, parodies the ultralight community as a whole and backpacking as a whole, and it's all in good fun. Um, so, you know, of course, I it's it's a fine line between being mean-spirited and having a good sense of humor, and so I take it all in good humor. I think it's funny. Uh, it's a funny account, um, and so I, I would suggest if you're on Instagram, go ahead and give that a follow. Part of going back to my um, free, the that peak experience, though, one of the things I remember, uh, we were heading up, I think, Buckskin. So it was the last pass of that trip. 
And I remember, uh, and this was, this did not make it into the video, by the way. So this is some of the behind the scenes. And I was really having a hard time with altitude. I was popping ibuprofen, but I was just exhausted and just, you know, walking and breathing super hard and not having a super great time at that, at that point. But I remember Karate Josh looked at me and, and motivating as he is, and he pretty much said, wait, so the only option is to go ahead. And I, I knew it was, but it was funny to hear him say it. And he said, what else are you going to do? Are you going to push that SOS button on the side of your uh, GPS? And that kind of kicked me out of it. And I was like, uh, no, I'm not going to do that. And that wasn't even an option for me. Uh, at that point, I, I, I didn't feel that badly. <laughs> but that kind of kicked my butt in gear, got me motivated. And if you ever have met Karate Josh, he's all about motivation and uh, positive thinking and comments and making sure you strive to be the best person you, you can be and you try and uh, uh, challenge yourself. And so that's great. Let's go ahead and have a look at the chat so I don't for I have not forgotten you guys are here while I'm on my soapbox. Am I free January the 6th? I'll have to message you, Scott, look at my calendar and see what's going on. Uh, probably not, um, just because I work in a school, so I probably will be coming back around that time. Even though that's the weekend, I probably would just have gotten back. Uh, let's see. Rom, hello, Rom. Franconia Ridge from Belize Outdoor says that's probably my high uh, so far. Uh, Benjamin Denley on the subject of maroon bells could talk about the logistics of getting there, uh, permits and such. So yeah, I can definitely talk about the maroon bells. And so, but it's changing. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what the changes have been. So in terms of some logistics, so bear canisters for sure are required. And so if you are thinking about uh, heading out there, that is something you need to do. Um, permits at this, you know, when I when we did it last summer, it pretty much was just walk up and you self-register at the kiosk, you drop it in, and that was it. They are switching now to where you have to, uh, I don't know if it's a lottery system yet, I don't think they've fully decided, um, but it is getting more complicated. So I, do, I don't want to talk too much about logistics. Um, in terms of getting there, what we had to do is we just went ahead and we uh, flew into Denver from Detroit. We're kind of in Ohio, but we're in Northwest Ohio, so Detroit was pretty close. Flew to Denver, and then we drove a car from, uh, we rented from Denver and drove to Aspen. And that took us about three and a half to four hours or so. Um, and then we got to the trailhead. And th the funny thing is, sometimes it can get confusing when you go to the, get to the maroon bells. And I, I feel like th the videos, and even my video, because it's logistics and no one wants to watch a lot of that, um, It you kind of go into this first parking lot section, you stop at the ranger station, and that's where that nice ranger said, hey, you guys know about the snow conditions up there? And we said, yeah, we did. <laughs> and we went on, and she just made sure we had our bear canister. And then there's kind of an overnight parking lot very, very close to the trailhead. So it's pretty convenient, but if there's a spot available. And so that's kind of one of the big things um, that we, we were fortunate that um, the time we arrived, um, it was about noon or so, and some people were leaving. They had just gotten off the loop. And when we got there, we were able to get one of the last parking spots. Now, when we were leaving, there were people waiting on parking spots. So that's one of the reasons also, not only because of um, making sure that the area and environment recovers is that they're limiting people going there, but they're also um, making sure that, um, I think it just avoiding overcrowding is the big issue. So see you, Scott. Meerkat Hiking is talking about Grandfather Mountain was my highest up in the clouds. And that's a good one. Hey, Devin, and hey, Trip. A while back, this is Scott asking, you did a video on your new Fitbit Charge 2, which I still use. Uh, yep, I still use it, still like it, still would recommend it. Um, you have the Charge HR upgrading to the Charge 2. I'd say that was probably the biggest um, upgrade that I did. I've, I've thought about getting things like the Fitbit Blaze or the Fitbit um, Surge, um, but I feel like this uh, Fitbit charge has like just enough stuff that I need. And the big thing I use it for um, while I'm out backpacking is actually not distance. Because Fitbit's judging of distance, I think, is not great. I actually used it a lot out west to make sure that my heart rate wasn't getting super high and that I wasn't pushing myself too hard. Um, because you guys know out here in the East Coast, you pretty much can push yourself, as long as you're in decent shape, pretty far, pretty hard, and not have a whole lot of um, of problems with that. It shouldn't be an issue, like health-wise. 
But out west, if you push yourself way hard, you can make yourself ill. And so I use that to kind of monitor my, my body and know that, hey, my heart rate's been this high for a while at, you know, at peak or in cardio, whatever it is, and I use it to monitor myself that way. So that's the big thing is the big push for me is having it to monitor heart rate. Um, you know, it monitors sleeping as well. I still use it every day. I kind of strap it on. It just helps me be aware of what, um, uh, how many steps I've taken. I keep track of kind of how many calories if I'm looking to lose or, um, or kind of get more in shape. Uh, and it help, kind of helps me balance out that equation. So yeah, I, I think it's a, I think it's a worthy upgrade for sure. And what is your tactic on storing your gear while hanging is what what Bruce from Nature Calls is asking. I'm just checking to make sure there's not much of a delay. Seems like it's pretty good right now. Um, right now where I store my gear, uh, the majority of the time is I usually will put my uh, ground sheet. Remember I use my um, uh, Z-Pax rain kilt and usually I'll put that actually under my hammock. And that's usually where I store a lot of my gear. So I'd say the vast majority of it goes under my hammock. I usually will set it up so that uh, my backpack is under there. My shoes are usually off to the side, um, kind of facing the wrong way, facing down. And so try to avoid things crawling into it. That's where all my um, dirty clothes are usually laying on that um, rain kilt as a ground sheet. All that stuff is there. Um, I definitely use that in inclement weather. And so if it's, if it's raining, I actually will try to, cover up um, all that gear in that rain kilt and stop avoiding some splashing. Um, if we're having really good weather, I usually will use a gear sling and sling my pack uh, to a tree. And then I usually will just kind of pull things in and out of my pack as I need to. And so those are my two options in terms of where I store things. My, my shoes tend to go under my hammock. Everything's kind of there. And so that way it's nice. Uh, if you think about Shug when he is drinking his coffee from the hammock, um, I use that same philosophy or idea for my gear. And so all I have to do to get my gear is I reach down and grab my shoes or I can reach pretty much anything that's under my hammock. So it's almost directly under my hammock um, when I'm laying in it, um, just offset just slightly um, to the side so I can reach it pretty easily. Uh, so Josh wanted to answer that, hey, that question. So good, I'm glad I got that answered for you. Uh, hey, Stricky. August Hawk bought four human gear duos after your video. Problem we have is the utensils detach too easily when eating. Huh, I have not had that problem. Usually it clips together pretty um, securely for me. I, I don't know if they changed the design or not, but it actually was a, a pretty tight tolerance for me. Like it's a pretty audible um, click and I haven't had any issues like that. Think how you eat stew, contact with lips, pulls the duo apart. No, I actually am not having that issue. I, I would suggest either... Uh, Returning those or actually reaching out to human gear because it, it should not. I actually have to to pull apart the human gear um, pretty hard in order to get it to come apart. Um, and it's one of those things where I, I like that and it has a nice positive click together and it's it's not easy to pull apart for me. At least the you know the few I've tried. Hey Sean. My next trip, Sturkey, is probably gonna be the Laurel Highlands hiking trail in January is the plan. a um, uh, bunch of guys are are going in that one in late January is the hope. Um, we have a tentative schedule set up about um, how far we wanna go. A lot of it depends on the weather. If we have bad weather, we have one plan. Um, if we have good weather, we're hoping to do the entire thing. So it should be four days, uh, I think 70 miles, which is aggressive and it should be it should be fun, but it's, it's definitely gonna be a challenge for me at least. I know some of those guys have, have done that uh, pretty easily. But especially in the winter, I'm thinking I'm just gonna I'm gonna slow down some, and so that's when um, that's my next trip is the plan, end of January. Hey, Bob, stocking my T-shirt. Yeah, if you guys are interested in shirts, I've been I got one recently designed that I know everyone's gonna love, <laughs> and it's my trowel shirt. It's one of the designs I had uh, a graphic artist work on, and I really like it. And so hopefully you uh, check it out. It's in the description, of course. Um, and I do get a cut of 
if you decide to buy a shirt, it's a little bit more expensive than usual just because I had to get someone to design it for me. But it's hilarious. It makes me laugh every time I look at the shirt. My wife rolls her eyes. <laughs> but be sure to check it out. Um, lots of different options on here. And you'll like the uh, the bottom, uh, the diversity, trial diversity. Hey, Black Mountain. <laughs> Sean bought. A lot of people bought human gear duos i will say because you can track how many people um buy from from those links for example i would say um about 400 people clicked on that human gear duo uh link and i think pretty much close to 50 or 60 people bought human gear duos <laughs> and i am not connected to human gear duo in any way it's just a great design and i really really like it i mean i think i weighed mine it is 0.8 ounces and to me, just having that extra reach, the link is in the description for the Human Gear Duo. Um, but be sure to, to check that out. I, I really love them. Um, not affiliated with them in any way. Actually, the designer for uh, the Human Gear Duo actually commented on, um, I think it was the, the last video I did, the favorite backpacking gear where I talked about, about it. And he's he just as glad as people are enjoy using it. He helped design it. And I think that's a, a really awesome thing to, to kind of put your name on it and put it out there uh crazy kev um i'm not sure if i'm supposed to share who's going yet I'll, I'll let them share in the chat if they if they would like to um but it's actually not the joshes i've never hiked with these people before um but you will recognize them for sure uh rom is yep human gear duo i, th I think everyone's really like that yeah i'm looking forward to doing the video this one's gonna be interesting um just because it's gonna be one of my first times um backpacking and filming for sure um, while I'm out in winter weather. And so one of those things I'm trying to uh, make sure I do is I account for um, having extra batteries, for example, because I don't want, for example, my, my phone to go dead on me and not be able to uh, recharge it. So I'm going to carry multiple batteries, sleeping with batteries. Some of those things are going to be different. I, th I probably will bring more of a tripod than I usually do. Just try to set up more shots. Uh, we're gonna have fires, of course. Just try to stay warmer. Um, that and usually I don't have a fire. Um, we're gonna uh, possibly sleep in some shelters or sleep nearby shelters. I'm still gonna bring the hammock, um, but I'm not afraid to sleep in a shelter if it's gonna be just crazy outside. <laughs> Mr. Donnell is talking about the trowel shirt. Yeah, and so yeah, it's it's a good one. It's I, I really like it. Okay, so Meerkat is saying it's all good. So he is actually one of the ones uh, organizing the, the trip. And so he is one of the people who's who's coming. And yep, and so Frozen is probably, we're hoping to be there and organize that um, and not have um, too much of an issue, I guess. Should be a good one. Uh, Bruce is asking, when setting up your tarp, do you go with the wind indicated at the time or do you go with prevailing winds. I tend to go with how it's indicating at the time. Um, a lot of times though, Bruce, for, for me, it, it, it I choose tree selection first. Um, oh, and Gary's coming as well. <laughs> um, I go with tree selection first uh, before I worry about wind just because I need a section to hang and um, that's where I need to go with first. And so that's one of those things that I'll be, usually when I set up is I look for Widowmakers, of course, and then I look for appropriate distance and hang angles and how that looks. And then I look at where the wind is. Um, just because to me, that, for me at least, that goes in order of comfort. And I'd rather be comfortable first. And blocking wind is something I'll definitely, uh, uh, blocking the direction of the wind is something I'll have to pay attention to, especially in uh, winter hammock hanging. That's something I'll, I'll have to focus on is I'll actually be building in the Mama Jumma just because it has a little bit extra length and more wind block. Um, than the Warbot at Mini Fly, which is a little shorter. Yeah, I'm hoping it'll be a good video, Mason. Spike Iver said he wouldn't make it, so I kind of knew Frozen that people were going on a trip. Yep. Yep, that's the plan, 70 miles. That's actually a little bit... <laughs> I know Alex Mirka is, is going to chime in, but that's actually more than I usually like to do, but I can hang with it. Um, and so it should be interesting to do that many miles uh especially because you have to travel time to um to account for in there on some of the days um but i was looking at the elevation profile of the laurel highlands hiking trail and it's not 
terrible if you think if you look overall where it is it looks like it stays fairly flat in general in terms of overall gain and overall loss and you know of course the people who who have hiked it multiple times will know better than i will so let's see i was thinking about starting a youtube channel for fun this is crazy kev do you ever run into problems using your name for your youtube handle no trail name after three years actually i have i have never had a problem i, I guess i thought about doing something like um um like Meerkat Hiking or Frozen's Outdoor Adventures or something where it wasn't my actual name. Um, but then I thought about it. I just, I'd rather just be who I am. And so one of the easiest ways around that is just using my name. Never had an issue with it. Um, I, I always try to make sure, and, and this is the key for me, is that I'm genuine and I'm the exact same person um, from YouTube, what you see here in the live stream, uh, the person you meet on the trail. And that way, it's just easier for me. Um, it's I think it's more difficult to like, uh, and this is not knocking anyone else, you know, who has a, a different name, but it's just easier for me not to be a, a different person or a persona or say, you know, this is Tim with blank, you know, even Tim Watson Outdoors sounds odd to me, um, but it, I haven't had an issue at all. I've never seen Syntax do a collab with anyone. You know, he, I mean, he has his friend Mike, who's Trail Killer on uh, on YouTube, but I haven't seen anything beyond that. Uh, Steven, hey Tim, I live in Columbus. I was wondering if Dolly Sods or Red River Gorge was worth the drive, and if so, could you rough it around this? Could you could you rough it around this time of year? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I'm not sure if I would do. Um, dolly sods in the winter i guess in, in terms of the the loop that we did um i'm not certain if i would do that in the winter uh, just in terms of i haven't been there as many times so i'm not as familiar with it we just went that one time um but red river gorge i definitely would hit in the winter i i definitely would that's something i would consider uh i think you just have to be careful on the cliff edges but there are lots of great areas in the winter i'd hit, hit up in the gorge and um, you know, if it wasn't Laurel Highlands Hiking Trail, I thought about um, just kind of exploring the gorge for a couple days, even more so than I have um, some more unofficial trails, depending on snow levels. And um, yeah, I, I definitely would, I can't, I would highly recommend um, the gorge in the, in the winter time. I think it'd be really cool. Uh, Circuit is backpacking adventures. That's my editing software I used to use, and I still do uh, use iMovie actually just on my phone and so that's what i uh, use primarily is the iphone 7 uh, pretty much for all my filming all the filming you've ever seen except for this is the webcam uh, on the mac um, but i use the iphone 7 so i've used imovie for years at this point um, i recently with the mac uh, purchased final cut pro and so that's what i use on most of the new videos that you see it just makes editing a lot cleaner and moving from iMovie to Final Cut Pro has been pretty seamless and I'm still not using um, everything that I can. Uh, Ty Pinion says, wow, it sounds like you need Red, <laughs> Red Bear and Darwin to have my entire YouTube playlist. What an all-star trip. I'm, I'm excited about it. It should be a, um, a really fun one. Um, one. One of the things that I was considering is actually... Uh, I was invited to go down to Florida and do some hiking down there in Ocala National Forest, but the timing didn't work out for work. And so as far as I know, the timing for uh, the Laurel Highlands hiking trail is going to work out for work and um, it shouldn't be an issue. But as usual, you never know until the new year starts for me exactly what, you know, when we're, we already kind of have some of the dates set, but we're trying to figure out exactly the, um, what works. Adventure Archives to Go would be awesome. I think I'd like to hike with those guys, um, Alex from Meerkat, talking about Adventure Archives, just to see, not only because they seem like fun guys, but just to see how they film. <laughs> um, just because some of the stuff that they, they film, Adventure Archives does, is just so awesome and so well edited. And if you watch um, Robbie's uh, vlogs, I think it's just amazing just to see how he puts them together and how he can make something that that overall seems mundane um, just flow. So that'd be great. 
Andrew could tell you what vegetation you could eat. And actually, Carlson, it's funny that you mentioned that because what I've been trying to do is get a lot better at um, identifying plants and wild edibles. That's a huge hole in my outdoorsman um, checkbook, I guess, if you if you want to call it that. Um, just making sure that you know what different trees are and what food is edible out there. And so I actually started, Andrew kind of inspired me because I think in one of his videos, he talked about how he started um, getting to know different types of plants. And he basically started on the Ohio Department of Natural Resources website. And they have a plant ID list and they go through all the different features. So I've been trying to do it with trees first and kind of slowly move on from there. So we'll see, maybe someday I'll be just as good as he is. <laughs> Not likely, but but someday. Hey, Practical Outdoors, how's it going? Yeah, late January, I think would be great. I, I would try out the Gorge, uh, Stephen, in January. I, I just think there are lots of different areas in there to camp. Um, you wouldn't have to worry about snakes a whole lot um, in the winter in the Gorge. And I just think it, the waterfalls would have their kind of own beauty. A trip with Shug would be interesting as well. He he seems like a whenever I watch him and he's talked about you know people asking him to go hiking, um, he definitely has a, he seems more private. I, I feel like sometimes YouTube is an outlet for people just to kind of um, get your personality out, talk, um, hang out, maybe say things that you wouldn't ordinarily say. And his personality seems very outgoing, but he also seems like a, a private person. And so I I think that'd be kind of fun to to hang out with him. So. Bob from Uptree listening when he hiked with uh, Adventure Archives, his wife got bored and ditched him. <laughs> yeah, and Stricky, that's exactly uh, in the chat, says it exactly right. Adventure Archives can just make anything seem adventurous, which is awesome. Uh, Merry Christmas, Stricky. And Chris <laughs> is making up names of plants. Let me get to some questions and some of the, the show that was asked. And so for some reason, I've been getting a lot of questions on some of my old backpacking food videos, which is great. It's always nice to see some older videos kind of getting some love um, because I still use a lot of prepackaged stuff. Uh, you guys have remember last time I talked about backpacking food, I've tried to stay healthier and try to make sure I go with less processed stuff. Someone recently uh, commented uh, and suggested getting my own food dehydrator. And that's something I've considered. Um, the thing for me is um, that definitely would help with nutrition. It definitely will help um, with weight, just like any other backpacking food. But I'm not sure if it truly brings down your cost when you account for the time that you invest in making your own backpacking food versus, let's say, a mountain house meal. Or and th that's where, for for me, I I would rather purchase a freeze dried meal than I would make my own. Um, even though I know making my own would be more more nutritious, etc. I get that. Um, I just feel like I don't want to wait for, for this backpacking food to dry all night and then repackage it and then um, do it again or make several meals that way. What do you guys who are in the chat think about that? Uh, does anyone in the chat kind of dehydrate their own food? Uh, let me know. But what I, what I do uh, right now is just kind of fruits, nuts, fresher stuff um, that will last a couple days at least. Um, yeah, like Chris is saying, you get more variety, so that's kind of good, um, but that's one of the things where I, I kind of hesitate to to kind of go all in with uh, dehydrating my own food. Uh, practical Outdoors, I definitely use a hammock majority of the time. Uh, I take that back. Yeah, hammock, or I've slept in shelters most recently. I have some cheap tents. I've slept in them a couple times. I'm hoping you guys who have followed the channel for a while, hoping to eventually um, get a family size tent. So something like the Rain Shadow 2 is going to become the Rain Shadow 3. It's going to uh, have another model, I think, because I reached out to him and asked him if he's um, willing to have me test one of those. I was thinking more for a family trip. And so he said he's actually redoing it or... Uh, I don't know, doing a new model of that tent. So I'm going to go ahead and hopefully purchase that. Or if he wants to have it reviewed, um, the Rain Shadow 3. Um, we'll, we'll see. Uh, sleeves, time is money. And besides, I can't cook. <laughs> uh, I can cook, you know, I, and there's some things I would like to dehydrate. But for me, the, the time is something I'm not, I'm not sure. Dehydrating peanut butter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Powdered 
powdered peanut butter or powdered milk. I, I'm yet to try powdered milk, but I'm curious. Uh, I'm not going to try a whole lot of new things on the winter trip, um, but this upcoming season, I want to try some more um, hot breakfast options because for me, I like to go on the move and eat on the move for breakfast and kind of get that done so I'm on the trail pretty quickly. And so I tend not to have a hot breakfast at all. I tend to not have any hot drinks at all. That's going to change, of course, this winter, um, especially around uh, dinner time. I'm definitely going to have some hot, hot food, um, but I don't anticipate stopping for a hot breakfast. Dehydrating venison. If yeah, if you have the that's true. If you if you have the the means to hunt your own food, I think that would work really well. Pop tarts is a pretty popular um, option, but yeah, I tend to. Someone, um, if you follow, let's see, if you search for ketogenic backpackers on Facebook, there's a group on there that I try to follow because I try to not get a sugar crash while I'm hiking. It's like a, I always try to maintain what I call a constant calorie drip. And so I'm never, am like super hungry. Of course, you get that hiker hunger after just for me, at least just like two days. <laughs> um, but I, I feel like you want to maintain a constant caloric drip. So you you don't you never get these high highs or these super low lows and you never feel yourself truly crash. And so I feel probably like going semi ketogenic where I'm talking more um, high protein, uh, high fat, um, that sort of diet seems to fit me better. I still, of course, have some carbs in there and that's just me. Um, but I tend to lean more towards the side of high protein, high fat. Pop tarts for life, Josh. Yeah, I use dry milk with granola. It's refreshing, and that's exactly what I'm thinking of. Mason is trying that um, powdered milk with granola or powdered milk with uh, oatmeal of some kind. I think that'd be interesting to try, especially filter cold water. Hey, frozen. How's it going? Oh, Bob, you will. I hope you don't, but I don't think you'll regret making that purchase for the Arc haul. I think that would be awesome. I think your only choice that you'll have to really struggle with is what color to get. <laughs> I just think there's there's so many good options on there, um, on the Arc Hall that you can, I don't think you can go wrong. I think it's, for me at least, it's been the perfect pack. Especially coming from the uh, the EXO series, I think you'll, um, I think you'll really like that. Mike is talking about, I can make a meal, the dehydrated meal, for around $2.50 versus $9. I can probably make 20 meals at one time four hours to dehydrate the beef or chicken. And so that that's not bad. Um, $9. See, I, I, I guess depending on the sale that you get. And at some point, remember, check my most recent videos um, at the end of December, but there should be a Mountain House 30% off code. So it, it brings the cost down. I don't get any benefit for sharing that code. You just get 30% off. And I'm pretty sure Mountain House on their Facebook page just shared a 30% off code, so you can use that as well. Um, no benefit to that. I am an ambassador, so I have to share that, but I don't I don't see anything from you guys buying that. Uh, yes, Josh, I have heard of Superior Wilderness Designs. If you watch my videos and you've seen Karate Josh, <laughs> the guy with the kind of shaved head and the, the beard, he has a Superior Wilderness Designs pack. And so he really likes his as well. The only difference that I can see, that I don't think there's any difference really in quality. Um, if anything, you have even more options and individual design and superior wilderness design because they work uh, on your individual pack. The thing with Z-Packs is that they're actually getting, I feel like, bigger, which is not a bad thing, but they just can't tailor as many individual things as superior wilderness design is. I'm pretty sure it's just... Um, him and her mom and pop shop um, kind of running things. And so they can tailor everything to their um, specific pack. And they, they change things. I, I know Karate Josh did fairly frequently. And so it's something where um, I don't think you can go wrong with that either. They've done a really nice job. I like his pack. The only difference that I prefer is I like the, uh, the mesh suspension uh, for my back in the summer. Kind of cool things off. And... Cry Josh doesn't seem to mind not having it, and so he he deals with uh, you know more of a sweaty back than I would like to. Uh, oh, Bob is talking about the 
the blast. Yeah, no, I, yep, I would get the hull, um, Bob, just because the blast, I, I saw, I've been watching Evan's uh, videos, and so where he talks about the blast versus the hull, and he's had uh, some issues with his blast, I think in terms of just overall wear um, versus the hull, which tends to be a little tougher. Hey, Milk Steak, thank you very much. Um, just went all in on hammock camping. How smart am I? I think you're a very smart man if you sleep really well in a hammock. <laughs> and that's what I, I always tell people is that hammock camping is is not necessarily for everyone. Um, but for me, it is hands down the best night's sleep um, that I can get um, out camping anywhere. I can tell a big difference um, with sleeping on the ground. Granted, since I switched to the Xtherm pad, sleeping on the ground has not been completely awful because it's a really good pad. Um, but a hammock will, I, you know, I can sleep better and using my Fitbit to track my sleep overall, I sleep better in a hammock than I do in my bed. And Jip Jason says it right. Three ounces more for more durability. He's talking about the arc hall versus the arc blast. And so the arc hall, I think e even, uh, z has said it tends to be more, more durable. Um, uh, one of the questions I got this past week, cause you guys have seen the, um, save money video and my, one of my favorite places to look for used gear. And I got this question, I think last live stream, favorite places to get used gear is hands down Facebook. I've seen gear trade and hammock forms is pretty good. I mentioned those in the video, excuse me, mentioned those in the video, but Facebook, my my Facebook feed when I look at it is so funny because it's full of backpacking gear. Another group that I forgot to mention is Gear Rat Outdoors, and I forgot they actually I knew they discussed gear, but they actually sell gear on there as well. And so it's some something to check out. But Facebook, hands down, is one of my favorite um, places to buy used gear. You can you can buy a lot of stuff. <laughs> I I can tell there's gonna be a lot like a of dumb and dumber jokes, I think, when we're hiking <laughs> out in the Laurel Highlands hiking trail. I like it a lot. <laughs> uh, Slaves is talking about best sleep by far in a hammock, and I agree. Someone asked me about looking at my old videos. Uh, so sometimes I'll get comments on the videos like, um, let's say, the Pitcher Rocks Trail, which is beautiful. Everyone should do that. I'd say in the summer, let the water warm up a little bit in Lake Superior. Um, so maybe you want to go in July instead of June. Um, but I actually do watch, this sounds weird maybe, I watch my old videos, um, I don't know, once or twice a month I go back and watch an old trip um, just because it's something that is just, it's fun to relive and it's fun to see the area. Sometimes I remember, I, I rewatch because I have a question um, in the comments. I'm like, huh, I wonder, I don't remember what I said or what I did. And I actually will go back and rewatch that video. It's just fun for me to kind of relive that, um, and I I don't do it very often, but I do it often enough that I can get familiar with my own videos. Sometimes I get sick of hearing my own voice, and so I'll skip some, ahead some parts of my own video, um, but it's just fun to kind of relive that. One of the areas that I do want to revisit is Mount Lacan, and that's just, it's one of those things I I think it has so much repeat value doing Lacan, and uh, especially in the winter, I, I don't know if, Sometimes if you follow Lacant Lodge on Facebook again, um, you kind of see when they post um, kind of what conditions are like, what trail conditions are like, and it just looks beautiful. Like you can't stay in the lodge, but it'd be nice to stay at the shelter that's up at Lacan and see Myrtle Point and Cliff Tops from there. Uh, Team Orange for Arc Hall. I like to be seen during hunting season. Subaru Josh has an orange Arc Hall as well, and he, he likes it. Uh, Josh, I have never done about... Well, I've never done any sewing projects. Some DIY stuff I I will go ahead and try out, like um, just making like, oh, let's see, those those tarp uh, pullouts that I did, the self-tensioners for tarp. I'll do things like that. Knots, uh, tying rope, shot cord. Um, I even, I, I have never done it, but I would kind of um, put my hand at splicing am steel if I had to. Um, <laughs> Adam says he watches his own videos all the time to pad the views, <laughs> but no, no sewing projects. I know backcountry exposure, um, recently did a hammock project. Um, he sewed himself. 
Um, but um, the big DIY guy, if you search on YouTube, is Bruce from Nature Calls. Um, just did this his uh, zero degree quilt or well less than zero degree quilt under quilt for his hammock, um, and he goes out in all weather. But he makes tarps, makes hammocks. So you should definitely check him out if you haven't on YouTube. Have I come across a lightish weight compression sack for your quilts? Need something to stuff my zero degree quilts in so they don't take up half my pack. <laughs> Audio is good. Thanks, Nate. Um, so the, the big thing that I use right now is I tend to use like the, the enlightened equipment stuff, um, stuff sack that comes. So they, you know, they give you that still nylon stuff sack. So that, that won't help you, but maybe they sell it separately. Um, and it's just something where I just shove the, shove it in there. It's not a compression s sack. And actually, uh, Jason, when I, you, I have a zero degree bag from outdoor vitals that I'll be testing on the Laurel Highlands uh, Trail, and they come with a compression sack. Unfortunately, it's not the lightest, um, but it works for now. Uh, yeah, it takes up. It does take up a lot of the pack. <laughs> At least the the nice thing is that the the arc hull is large, and so that it doesn't it doesn't uh, you know it doesn't fill up super quickly, but it does take up a lot of the pack. And and I know you. You guys are small torso guys, so you don't have as much of a, a, a pack being bigger. Uh, last questions, and then we'll take it off from here. We're going on, oh my gosh, 46 minutes already. Hey, Hiking with Mike. So a couple questions. Oh, one thing I wanted to bring up is the pack pillow. <laughs> I still like it. I still, and you probably, you guys who go with me in, uh, in January will see it in winter. Um, in case I do any ground sleeping, I don't foresee any day hiking or taking a pack on that but it's a, one of those things where um <laughs> where i i just i like the idea of how multi-purpose it is and it just fits like a a unique uh niche and a lot of people did not like that video for whatever reason <laughs> and and i don't know why pack pillow got so much hate but it really was it's a it seems like a quality piece of gear and uh once again, not affiliated with them in any way. I don't get any benefit for, for saying that. Um, it's just one of those things where I was surprised by how many people did not like uh, the pack pillow. Uh, final question that I got on my um, channel the last couple um, couple days, I guess, is double layer hammock. Someone was asking me about um, using that uh, in kind of the comfort of a double layer um, hammock with a pad in it. I know some people like putting a pad between the two layers of hammock and orienting that way. And for me, when I've tried that, it seems like it slips even more. You have to worry about putting maybe something like a Velcro or that rubber matting um, to make sure your pad doesn't slip. Um, some people say it's easier for them to adjust it when it's between um, the two layers of the hammock. For me, I'd rather have it in a single layer hammock so I can grab it myself i don't have to worry about maneuvering it between two layers so there's that you'll use it as a fire starter on the laura haas i can tell the pack pillow <laughs> we're gonna you know tear out the stuffing and the and the, the cushioning and, and use it as fire starting <laughs> oh just wait till you guys see what i what i use in my first a kit as an emergency fire starter i don't know if i'll keep that in the video or not but it will still be there um Oh gosh, hiking shirtless in, in January. If if Gary is hiking in January, he's shirtless. I know things are going to be good. We're going to finish the whole trail. <laughs> All right, guys, that's coming around 48 minutes now. So we're going to call it good. Um, remember, if, we, if you want to keep track of when the channel and this show is going to happen, we try to do it every other Wednesday around 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we run a little under an hour. And so it's a fun time where we talk about gear, see what's going on in the gear world and gear community. You guys ask backpacking questions and we just have a fun time um, chatting. And so be sure to check us out. Uh, remember on Facebook and Twitter is where I kind of announce whether or not I'm streaming that Wednesday. So keep an eye out for that. Um, the links are in the description for my handles on Facebook and on Twitter. So thanks for watching, guys. It's fun as always. Peace.